What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to some out there. It is the Earthmaster here on this Thursday, June 2nd, 2022 date. A whole bunch of twos out there. Uh, latest, it's about 11.33 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 1.9 up here around Alaska. We did have some activity kick up here in Northern, Northern California. I kind of want to jump into uh, right off the bat. Uh, we did have an early morning earthquake around the Bay Area of California. Just to the uh, north of uh, Pittsburgh area, Concord. Very highly populated region filling this earthquake. Although this 4.1 was a little down there. Uh, down about 18 kilometers or so below the surface and we've been seeing a little bit of aftershock sequences uh, following that 4.1 which is very typical for California um, with the plate dynamics out here and the, and the uh, amount of stress that's along the west coast sometimes a 3.7 can even trigger a, uh, a pretty good aftershock sequences uh, but so far following that 4.1 Looks like a 2.2, the largest aftershock in the sequence here. They have it set around seven kilometers northwest of Bay Point, California. And again, it was felt throughout the highly populated jungle of the Bay Area, uh, Fairfield, Richmond, San Francisco, Fremont, all over the place. Up here in Chico where I'm at, I didn't feel it. I don't think I was awake when this earthquake came in. Uh, it was at, uh, looks like about, uh, 12 UTC time so that would put it at uh, oh, about six or seven hours ago I definitely wasn't up around three or four in the morning somewhere around there so but definitely uh, quite a few folks did report feeling it looks like some light to moderate shaking this uh, earthquake if you notice doesn't have a fault system on it but I had to pull up uh, a different image here let me see if I can bring this up there we go and show you guys where this 4.1 struck uh, this is from my email. I had to email me a, uh, a fault map plane here because USGS does not show all of them <coughs> as far as the fault systems go. So the Rio Vista fault is where this 4.1 struck off. It's a couple different segments that head to the north and south and just south of the Travis Air Force Base area. Very close in proximity to that Air Force Base. Uh, also, I pulled up a little article here on this fault system which we haven't seen a lot of earthquake activity strike on uh, it's an article put out from 2010 uh, potential for induced seismic uh, seismicity related to the northern california co2 reduction project now this is a project i don't know if it's gotten put into um put into action but they're talking about uh, a proposed small scale co2 injection project uh, in this area and it looks like uh, they talk about the earthquake activity that has occurred around nearby faults, such as the Kirby Hills Fault, uh, and not a whole lot of activity <coughs> around the Rio Vista Fault. That's gonna be that one that we uh, uh, just, just showed you right here, but it is around that area where they wanted to put this injection site at. Um, <coughs> there's a little article here. Let me see if I can find it here. Talks about the uh, Rio Vista Fault fault right here the sherman island fault zone at its closest point is located approximately five miles southeast of the proposed injection site uh, it's going to be the sherman island rio vista fault zone uh, <coughs> excuse me the cgs fault map shows that the rio vista fault at the same location as the sherman island fault but the rio vista fault appears to have different strike than that of the sherman island fault uh, cgs identifies the rio vista fault as active during the last um, a million years or so, but without evidence of movement within the last 11,000 years, supposedly. So that's a little, uh, obviously it's, it's active right now, right? We've seen that little activity kick up here. Um, so I'm not for sure if they went ahead and did this proposed site. I know it was a, uh, a little, uh, documentation quite a few years ago in terms of looks like they were going to go down there at a depth of about 11,000 feet or so 
temperature and whatnot. So I'll include this little article here. It's pretty cool to read. Uh, there's the proposed well site uh, right around the Sherman Islands Fault, the Rio Vista Fault Zone, all within very close proximity of that zone. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, we'll keep an eye on it. I'm not for sure what satellite view is out here. Let's check and see if they got anything up here. Looks like, like it's right underneath that island. I uh, can't get too much closer than that, at least here on this map. So I'm not seeing a whole lot out there. Not too familiar with this part of the bay. I don't like going down there. I don't care for that area. But uh, yeah, just not but too much traffic and whatnot. It's too dangerous. But uh, it is out there. A little swarming of activity kicking up there today. It has been super duper quiet in terms of earthquake activity uh, over the past couple days or so. We've only seen maybe a a handful of small quakes up and down the Hayward Fault and the Calaveras Fault. Uh, but the only thing this tells me right here with this inland movement is the uh, pressure uh, kind of building up, continuing here along the Bay Area. There's quite a few fault systems here. Uh, we don't have to have the San Andreas Fault Zone here um, pop. It's been a while since it's uh, since the 1906 earthquake, obviously. Uh, we could have another large one on there, you never know. But there's these other fault systems of interest uh, such as these uh, certain unnamed ones, certain unassigned faults. The uh, Rio Vista fault where the 4.1 struck today was on an unassigned fault. So I... Uh, unspecified fault. Unassigned is its... Um, well, it is assigned, but it's an unspecified fault. Uncertain on the type of fault system that it is. So Calaveras Fault, Hayward Fault, those two main fault systems here east of the San Andreas Fault is something we have to watch for too because they go through obviously some heavily populated regions through the bay and they're definitely capable of producing some upper, upper sixes or so in this area. And it's been a while, I think it's been a little while. These two are the ones that uh, some geologists are kind of worried about. Of course you got a major plate boundary, right? That's pretty obvious. but. Uh, couple faults in there I think that we need to take note of after seeing this activity today on that inland fault Rio Vista fault zone as far as the rest of the Bay Area goes some movement further south along the Calaveras fault in the Hayward fault zone as it heads towards the San Andreas fault here major plate boundary uh, Northern California rest of Northern California pretty quiet uh, we haven't seen any and I find this kind of odd they're only reporting one earthquake here um, and it's not even really around the Cobb Mountain region. Is uh, these these little geyser events, hydrothermal operations, I should say, because there's te technically no active geysers out there. Look it up. I had someone tell me otherwise, but it's not. Look it up on the Wikipedia article. There's no geysers up there. It's a hydrothermal field way down below, and they're using uh, uh, steam. And sewage to produce to produce uh, earthquakes and, and create energy look it up calpine uh, energy operations through here but they've completely stopped reporting the activity this is the all magnitudes here so i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that i'll pull up a seismograph station there and uh, we'll keep it we'll keep an eye on it regardless i know those guys don't want any mention of earthquakes around there because of damage in the past uh, and lawsuits so, yeah, they don't want anything above. Uh, they don't want any earthquakes, but they happen. All right, uh, Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot going on, according to the USGS. Not for sure what's up with the reporting, but it's not uh, not active today, it looks like. A uh, little activity through the Ridgecrest region. A couple of spotty earthquakes around the Garlock Fault, although this activity from last night. No further large-scale movement to report here in Southern Cal. Latest quake shows a 1.8. Uh, pretty... Uh, and I want to show you, I want to go back up here while I'm thinking. I was looking at that earthquake pretty shallow. But look at the depths of these earthquakes here. Look how deep they are. That 4.1 was down there at 18 kilometers. The majority of these aftershocks, roughly about the same. That's pretty deep. There is a Great Valley Thrust Fault that runs up along this area. Man, I get hiccups every single time. Maybe it's my coffee. Maybe coffee is the culprit. That's all right. Coffee is good. Coffee is life. Um, so yeah, deep earthquake movement up there around that uh, specific fault zone. That's way down there, 18 kilometers. This one here, pretty shallow. 
Uh, seeing that negative depth there at 1.8 for the magnitude. Not a whole lot going on throughout the San Andreas Fault Zone. A couple small earthquakes here uh, just outside of the Brawley's uh, area. It's just off of the, actually it looks like it's right smack dab on the Brawley Seismic Zone. A couple very small microquakes. And even there, that's pretty deep. About 10 kilometers or so down there in this region. Rest of the country, what I've got out here in Texas, not a whole lot kicking up overnight. Doesn't look like anything's really kicked up overnight. We did see a little bit of subsequent movement here in Oklahoma. Still kind of watching this area uh, closely at 1.0 out in the uh, towards the panhandle and uh, rest of the country looks pretty quiet nothing going on Puerto Rico area a couple small spikes and some movement up and down the Perucelli Trench but no major activity uh, down here in the South Sandwich Islands we did see a uh, this is South Georgia Island 5.0 around the South Sandwich Trench here but a little bit more further inland it looks like on the northern end so still a little bit of heightened activity kicking off down there uh, following last year's eight-pointer that kicked off in that subduction zone down here in the South Pacific uh, South Pacific Antarctica Ridge plate boundary right here 5.4 and a little spotty movement up and down the uh, area around Tonga Vanuatu area and uh, over here south of the Philippines all seeing some deeper earthquake activity uh, back over here some deeper movements more shallower earthquake activity up here to the north Taiwan seen a 4.5 just off the coast of Taiwan, Japan region they have it set. Uh, looks like at about 8 kilometers for that 4.5. Uh, some movement along the Aleutian Trench. Although this uh, majority of this activity looks like it was from last night's time frame. So yeah, I guess the main story right now, kind of the activity in the Bay Area, right? We'll definitely watch it. Uh, if you were... Uh, I know we got quite a few folks there in the Bay Area that do monitor this uh, channel. And of course, as always, I'd, uh, I definitely appreciate it if you let me know what this felt like. Uh, looks like, um, you know, was, if you happen to be awake, that is. It was definitely felt um, all over the place there in the Bay Area. So, uh, yeah, let me know what it felt like. If it was a jolt, if it was a... Um, you know, maybe a, uh, a wave motion. Kind of curious. See if I can find out, find a uh, signature from here. I'm not going to go in here and let's see, closest station. And yeah, looking at that data. Sometimes you can tell from the seismographs, uh, maybe potentially what uh, type of earthquake it was or what may have been felt as far as the uh, jolting or rolling motion. This kind of looks like a double jolt type event. Uh, getting a little, see two, two uh, distinct earthquake signatures right there. Kind of gives the impression of a, uh, uh, a sudden jolt type earthquake. But uh, either way, let me know. I'm kind of curious if you did feel that earthquake this morning in the Bay Area, let's check out Yellowstone National Park. I know we don't have a whole lot going on there. There was a little bit of swarming activity around Maple Creek last night. Looks like that has since dropped off. A couple small, very small microquakes, but nothing popping here within the last hour or so. Uh, trimmer map from last night was pretty uh, uh, consistent with days past, although a little bit further uptick. About 337 epicenters along the Cascadia subduction zone. Again, down dip, downstream. These are not earthquakes, but uh, uh, vibrations, if you will, as the uh, plate there subducts. Juan de Fuca plate, or in three separate fashions, you got the Explorer plate, the Juan de Fuca plate, and the Gorda plate down south. Either way, the Cascadia subduction zone. Here's some of the M energy uh, they have set up here along the trimmer numbers and the count. Uh, let's check out Mount St. Helens. It's been a very uh, active in terms of microquake activity, and it's I'm sure it's continuing today. But it's something we uh, like to check here on the channel just to keep an eye on it, see if there's any some any bigger ones in the microquakes that they're not reporting up here. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they report the stuff. But today, um, this morning's time frame looks uh, yeah pretty active again. Quite a bit overnight as well. Some earthquakes there popping off. 
You guys see those signatures there along the uh, the colored lines? A couple, a couple small microquakes, but uh, no major stuff going on. Uh, space weather events. Well, not a whole lot going on either here, folks. Looks like we're still way ahead, though. Obviously, in our predicted sunspot numbers, the progression itself shows we're way ahead of schedule with the count and also the time frame uh, ahead of schedule. For the solar flux progression as well, way ahead. This is the sunspot number. This is the solar flux progression. And uh, everything's still way ahead of schedule, which is good. But for now, though, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that. I know we got a couple sunspots here on the sun, but they're not super, uh, super dynamic in terms of producing any type of events. Only 50% chance of a C flare, 10% chance for an M flare, and 1% 1, 1 chance for an X flare. No major coronal holes facing us. In fact, it uh, looks pretty clear across the board. I don't see any coronal holes listed at all. All right, guys, have a good day. I'm going to jump off here and... Uh, try to uh, make the best of this day it's pretty hot out there it's supposed to be close to 100 i'm gonna stay inside and uh, only go outside i guess to water the garden make sure it doesn't melt uh what do we got 1.8 into the area <clears throat> excuse me losing my voice again looks like right around where that uh 4.1 struck so still getting some aftershock sequences there following that 4.1 again still an obvious sign of uh you know some impending pressure there along the Bay Area. 1906 was not a long time ago, but still, uh, definitely I'm sure there's pressure building up in the Bay Area throughout the fault systems, specifically the Calaveras Hayward fault zones, um, after seeing this uh, inland activity kick up today. I think we need to watch those two specific faults pretty closely there. Uh, not in terms of four-pointers, but definitely much larger because uh, they're capable of producing it. All right, guys, have a good day. We'll chat you a little bit later tonight. Stay safe.